Hey everyone. Welcome to Top Tech News. This is your news channel for getting updated with the latest tech news headlines and their impact on business and our lives. To read the full news article for any of the news that we cover, simply click on its link given below in the description. To stay updated, show us some love and hit the subscribe button below and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. This way you would be informed whenever we upload a new video. Hi, my name is D and I am your host for today. Today's top headlines are iPhone's 13 rumored to have an always-on display. Google testing flexible workweek. Oppo introduces new slide concept phone. Apple releases iOS 14.3 and iPad OS 14.3 updates. India's Western plant protests puts light on supply chain difficulties. Let's get started. iPhone's 13 rumored to have an always-on display. A supply chain report last month raised the possibility of next year's flagship iPhones having an always-on display, and a follow-up report suggests the same screen technology could also enable Pro Motion. Both reports point to LG offering the same type of OLED panels to the iPhone that are currently used in the Apple Watch Series 5. Last month's report explained that LG would be making LTPO screens for next year's Pro model iPhones. Apple is planning to apply LTPO TFT to higher-tier iPhone models launching next year. It has used the low-temperature polycrystalline silicon, or LTPS, TFT process so far. An oxide TFT process will be added to become LPTO TFT. LTPO panels allow variable refresh rates. Dropping the refresh rate down to an extremely low rate means it uses a lot less power, which is what enables the always-on display on the Apple Watch Series 5. At the other end of the scale, refresh rate could be boosted to 120Hz for ultra-responsive and smooth graphics, and that's what we can expect. A 120Hz display which Apple brands as ProMotion is one of the features which distinguishes the iPad Pro models from the iPad Air. A couple of cautionary notes, however. First, this is not the first time we've heard rumors about a ProMotion display in the iPhone as the same rumors were circulating about the iPhone 12 Pro, and those of course turned out to be false. Second, while an LPTO display raises the possibility of some kind of always-on display, that doesn't mean Apple will choose to include the feature. The Apple Watch Series 4 also has an LTPO screen, but the company chose not to enable an always-on display for that. So we will have to wait for that magical Apple event to finally know what we will get. Google testing flexible workweek. Back in March, Google was one of the first companies to have employees work remotely in response to COVID-19. The expected return date has been pushed back several times now, with the latest target being September 2021. At that time, a flexible workweek will be tested. In a memo to employees last week, CEO Sundar Pichai announced the new September target for office reopenings. As expected, Googlers will be returning to a reconfigured workspace. Google will be piloting a flexible workweek where employees spend at least three collaboration days on campus. The company has long believed that unplanned face-to-face -face interactions at cafes and micro-kitchens help spur new ideas and solutions. As such, Google has worked to provide various perks that allow employees to stay on-site with coworkers. We are testing a hypothesis that a flexible work model will lead to greater productivity, collaboration, and well-being, Mr. Piche wrote in an email obtained by the New York Times. No company at our scale has ever created a fully hybrid workforce model, though a few are starting to test it, so it will be interesting to try. Teams can reserve collaboration spaces for up to a dozen people, while larger gatherings will take place outdoors. Single desks will also be available with these reconfigured spaces designed to lower the risk of spreading. Google's test of a flexible workweek will ultimately depend on local scenarios, with internships remaining virtual next year, while this planning comes as vaccines are beginning to arrive. The company will look into helping employees get the vaccine, but first recommends they follow guidance from their health authorities. Google has said it is looking for opportunities in mid to late 2021 to help make COVID-19 vaccines available to its workers, but only after high-risk and high-priority people globally have received the vaccines. Oppo introduces new slide concept phone. Oppo introduced the Find X 2021 rollable concept phone, which is some way off from becoming commercially available, but the company is already thinking ahead and what could the next revolution in smartphone design. Oppo collaborated with the Japanese design studio Nendo to bring a new concept slide phone. It has three hinges on the x-axis, allowing for seven different sizes. The idea behind this so-called slide phone originated from the idea of people wanting more functionality out of their handset, Oppo and Nendo revealed in a press release. By providing the flexibility to change the form of the phone, users get the ability to change the size to suit the occasion. 
The concept also includes a tucked in stylus. Either way, Oppo is aware there's still time until this device becomes reality, but it is always important to look ahead and find new innovation avenues. Both companies also worked on a TWS concept where the pair of earphones connect to a case slash power hub, but they will also be able to get attached to each other and become as compact as ever. The case can be placed on top of a smart speaker with wireless charging and the music will continue to play on the speaker. Apple releases iOS 14.3 and iPad OS 14.3 updates. Apple has released iOS 14.3 and iPad OS 14.3. The update includes new features such as Apple Pro RAW for iPhone 12 Pro users, as well as support for the recently launched AirPods Max over ear headphones and support for the Apple Fitness Plus service. One of the most notable changes for iPhone users in iOS 14.3 is support for the new Pro RAW photo format for iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max users. Apple announced the Pro RAW format in October alongside the iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max, teasing that it would be available via a future software update. When you update to iOS 14.3, you'll be able to enable the option via the Settings app under the Camera section, and under Formats. In that area of the Settings app, you should see a new toggle for Apple Pro RAW. Apple warns that each file in the Pro RAW format will be approximately 25 megabytes in size. Generally, shooting in RAW will give you more control over adjusting details such as color, details, and dynamic range of an image after it has been taken. Here's how Apple describes Pro RAW. Pro RAW gives you all the standard RAW information, along with the Apple image pipeline data. So you can get a head start on editing with noise reduction and multi-frame exposure adjustments already in place, and have more time to tweak color and white balance. There are also two other changes for the camera app. Option to record video at 25 FPS. Mirror the front-facing camera for still photos on iPhone 6S, iPhone 6S Plus, iPhone SE, iPhone 7, iPhone 7 Plus, iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone 10. iOS 14.3 also makes it easier to set custom app icons thanks to the ability to run shortcuts from the home screen without launching the shortcuts app first. The update also brings support for setting Ecosia as your default search engine and support for installing software updates for third-party HomeKit accessories directly in the Home app. The update also brings rare changes to the Apple TV app like an all-new Apple TV Plus tab makes it easy to discover and watch Apple original shows and movies. Enhanced search so you can browse by categories such as genre, and see recent searches and suggestions as you type and top search results shown with the most relevant matches across movies, TV shows, cast, channels, and sports. Finally, iOS 14.3 also includes support for Apple Fitness Plus, the new workout subscription service from Apple. The service costs $9.99 per month or $79.99 per year, and it's also included in the Apple One Premier Bundle for $30 per month. Apple also released tvOS 14.3 with support for Fitness Plus. iOS 14.3 will be available to users via an over-the-air update in the Settings app. For full details on all the features as part of these releases, head over to the news article by simply clicking on the link in the description below. India's Western Plant Protests puts light on supply chain difficulties. In India, Apple contracts Western, a Taiwanese manufacturer with a plant located in Kalar to assemble iPhones to sell in the region and surrounding areas. Protests broke out last week because salaries being held from factory workers. It's alleged that the protests broke into riots and resulted in thousands of iPhones being looted from the factory. As reported by the Indian media, Western estimates that the overall damage runs up to about 437 crore, over $59 million. This includes damages to the factory assembly line, factory property, and thousands of stolen iPhones. The violence is reported to have lasted two hours, during which time the damage took place this Saturday. State officials say that Western contracted six companies to hire around 8,900 employees at the Kolar plant. These contractors were paid by the company for their laborers, but Western has a conflict with the contract laborers for as long as three months, according to the government. The labor minister condemned the violence, calling the company's losses unacceptable. The Labor Department has issued notices to Wistron, stating that the company had three days to pay the employees, whether it's from Wistron or the labor contractors. Kolar police are investigating whether the violence was planned as intentional acts to destroy property especially as there were stories that this was motivated by leftist groups intending to hurt India's Make in India program and punish the Taiwanese company moving to India. Whatever the final cause might be, it gave an opportunity to China-backed media groups to attack the moving of industries out of the country due to the COVID-19 fallout.
they noted with glee that they had more stable policies when it came to labor management, a euphemism for control that no other democratic country can do. Let's hope that India manages this successfully as failure could lead to negative perception impacting other companies' decision to move their critical supply chain there. Well that's about it for today. Hope you found it helpful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. And do show us some love by clicking on the thumbs up button. Have a wonderful day everyone and we will be back again soon.